So it's a quarter after six. I had that other light on back there, but it was making this weird reflection on the screen. I was like, and I'm so out of it. And um, I had like a, a, a realization about this for a second. Hold on, I just took out this second cup. But my brain was so full. I was like, I just gotta start. As my brain starts, it starts like aching or something. So hold on a second. Plus the sickness, I swear to God. And it's not by any accident that our, I keep saying about the gut thing, which I'll tell you in a second, because I just saw a doctor, um, I don't know who she was before talking about her findings, but um, let me just say, because last night was weird and I had this this realization is, um, because uh, the dogs start falling asleep. Like, I swear to God, after they will always want to eat early. And then they run around for a while or do some stuff. And then they start getting tired. And they start laying around. They start falling asleep like 5.30 to 7 for sure. By 7, then it's like, well, I'm going to sleep. And so last night, um, I went to bed at 7. It was still really light outside. But I was like, man, I'm just, I just want to get some sleep while they're asleep. And then um, Stella woke me up and it was like almost two in the morning and I was like super out of it and went over, I got her some medicine, gave her some more medicine, laid back down and went, was like back out. And then, um, then she kind of cried or something and moved around or something. There was some, there was some other disruption. And then Max got up and then when he gets up, he has no manners whatsoever. He starts playing, jumping, just doing whatever the hell he wants to do. And so that's really hard to sleep through. And then he starts chewing on that that back part of his back. And I gave him a bath because at the allergens that come in, it's like once they get him inside, they start attacking us in certain places. Like these nano things or whatever are raining on us that they get inside of us. And they get inside of us in all different ways. And that's one thing I've been seeing more about. And then it's like they put their little soldiers inside of us. And then they, I think they control them through uh, frequency, but also through more chemicals because they can make us sicker and sicker and sicker. Like it's not just one thing that made this fast action cancer growth thing. It was a bunch. So then um, what was weird is like I would keep having the awareness of the room like where it would seem like I wasn't asleep. But I was asleep because when I get woke up, I'd be so out of it. And um, so then when the last time when um, when Max was just like he jumped up on top of me, I was like, oh, fuck. So I um, sit up and I think it's going to still be like three o'clock in the morning. It was like 515. I was like, oh, my God, how could I be this tired? I was like, I've slept like 10 hours and I still feel so exhausted and so out of it. But what the thing is that my realization thing was, was, um, cause I even talked about this with my mom when I was there and I said, when I get woke up, cause I think I was at her house and Stella had woke me up, something had woke me up and then I was really out of it. So I was like, man, I'm so out of it. When I get woke up, I have to wake myself up naturally or I'm just like out of it. And she was saying, yeah, I, I have that too. And I was saying, man, I think, uh, I don't remember what the whole conversation was, but I think I said something about being uh, a kid and getting woke up. Or I don't know if I'm interjecting that in my, like, sometimes I can't, sometimes I can't tell between what's real and what's not real. <laughs> like, sometimes I'm like, did I dream that or did that really happen? So hold on. All the markers of schizophrenia. Yeah, schizophrenia is people who were in that that realm was real. They're, to me, they're psychics that have gone wrong. They didn't believe in themselves in the bad, uh, with the, um, the attacking energy, it, you know, got the best of them. But it was like they were being misled, too, because of, um, you know, our medical establishment and shit. Because they don't, they don't want psychic people to believe in themselves and be talking to these other beings and shit. They don't want to learn your own power of telling them get the fuck on out of here. 
So, um, but I, I realized like, man, I think most of my time in school, <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> I was just out of it. Cause I like, I, I is so weird how out of it I feel. It's like almost like being drunk or something. And then I, I've talked about before. I've never felt like I was fully here. Like, like I've said, like I'm always in this other conversation that is happening is somewhere else. Um, however people perceive it, you know, perceive what you want to perceive. <laughs> I'm going to try and tell you how to think, think for yourself. Um, so hold on. But I, um, have always felt like I was not just in one world. Like I've been on the in the in the gray of the world i've been I, I have the awareness of this world but i didn't have the full awareness because i was confused for a long time like i really was like what the hell is wrong with people and then um but then in the uh, other world like to it, for, for it to be so real and then for you to tell people and them to think that you are crazy <laughs> No, this is real. Luckily, you know, it didn't start for me when I was 18 years old or something. It started when I was three. So I had a clear understanding, like, I'm not crazy. I've been talking to these people my whole life. And well, how would a three-year-old all of a sudden, you know, I'm going to go down there and put soap in this water. And all of a sudden, I'm going to have this whole debate with myself when I get down there at three years old. I'm pretty sure most three-year-olds are pretty impulsive. I mean, people be, are pretty impulsive. Like, we've got a, such a, a society that's so built on impulse. It's, like, mental. I just saw this woman. She was outraged. She was so fucking pissed. And so there is uh, people who are buying these little knitted two-inch packer penises for girl, little girls who are transitioning. And people are buying these for their little kids so they can... <laughs> People have gone so far off in, like, you've really got to work with getting your kid to love themselves, no matter what the package that they come in. And so, um, but, you know, I, um, when I get, like, super out of it like this, it uh, makes me feel like, um, I, I don't know, like, like, like stumbling drunk or something. And, and it's like, I, it's like, I don't know, did I not pull my whole self back in is how, like, I don't, I don't know what it is. It's weird, but I had that realization the day, like, man, if I went to school every day like this, cause I got woke up because they would wake me up. But no, cause there was, um, I did have a routine. I remember because uh, when I started, I wouldn't use an alarm clock. Because I realized, like, if I told them what time to wake me up, they would wake me up. And I would use the alarm clock because I'd be like, well, let's see. And then every single time, I would wake up one minute before the alarm clock went off. So I was like, okay, obviously, I don't need the alarm clock. I've just got to trust. And so I always use the um, that. So I would wake up. So I don't know. I don't think I felt so out of it all the time. I'm sure there was lots of times. But I'm sure there's lots of kids like we're just not meant to be, you know, treated like this, like cattle or something. Woke up when, when, when there's things that are supposed to happen naturally, <laughs> like to keep us in our rhythm. Like I, we're not supposed to do all this artificial stuff. Like we're not supposed to eat because it's feeding time. We're supposed to eat because we need energy. It's like everything is so out of whack. And I just saw this lady who I don't know her content or anything, but just by the one video I saw, she's obviously like a psychic medium kind of person. And so she said that she, um, they've done something to turn off the heart chakra. And hold on, let me get another drink because it's almost gone. Hold on. So that they've done something to turn off the heart chakra. And she said that um, she went, to, she was on a driving thing. And I don't know what her, if she traveled all the time or what. She was in Montecito, California. And she went into a little coffee shop. And she saw these three men sitting at a table. And she noticed that they didn't have any uh, crown aura above them. 
and that the, she couldn't see their their heart chakra. And so she thought that was strange, but then she started noticing that she wasn't seeing on anybody, nowhere in this whole town, nobody was having it. So she can obviously see auras and energy and color and stuff like, and she kept seeing, you know, that there was something missing. And I've told, I've said this a zillion times that uh, about, you got to think of like our realities or our cities or where we live as being more like Petri dishes. That's why I keep saying what it's going on here doesn't make it not real because it's not happening somewhere else. That's how they trick people. They do it like Petri dishes. Whatever's going on, it's all these like, fuck, man. They'd have to have a computer. There's no way a person could keep up with all the data that they create with what they have going on. And it's like a, I think that they created this giant computer of data information or something and they feed it. I wonder if this is where they're saying like this computer has developed its own state of consciousness through information, through all of our information or something. I don't know, uh, but that's the kind of shit that they do. Like they're fucking do this kind of stuff, but that you would think an energy created with all our information would begin to have its own intelligent, its own intelligence and would begin to have an understanding of information and would begin to question who and what it was because information is knowledge. So anyways, we got a lot of stuff that we're going to learn more about these mad scientists, fucking weirdo people who have no spiritual connection they're just i i don't know their shark chakras and their crown chakras are turned off <laughs> they have no connection and so the um so this lady was saying this whole town had this and she said she even went on a hike and she said the people she had passed she said that she could see like their heart chakra was like about 15 percent. and i don't know how her visions work like i know i understand that everybody can see different things like fuck the amount of shit that I have been seeing lately is driving me insane. It's like you just see something just go running by. You see something that's like you're constantly catching your eye like, did I just see something? Because it's very distracting and it's constantly, it's like, ugh. Maybe that is one of the reasons why when I was having all the issues with my sight and I was becoming concerned and they told me that they wanted me to focus on my inner vision, not the outer vision, but when I would try and look out, it has always had a interference. And, um, you know, and so I did focus a lot on my inner vision. And, um, uh, but now that my inner, my outer vision, oh, that must be that I've come into some type of balance because my outer vision it began to heal. And so this is where you got to listen to your guides and stuff. You got to see where you need to do your work. But for me to be able to start seeing with my outer vision and seeing and, and noticing so many things that, and then that would have been a distraction to see all this stuff because it is a distraction, but I guess it's a distraction I can handle now. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, that I've got, I've got, I don't have so much going on with the healing and stuff in my mind. I'm a, a lot more, I feel like a lot more in order because it wasn't always like this healing thing is rough. It's not simple. And it's, uh, it's not, um, it's kind of like humans just want the, the simplest, easiest, hurry and give it to me. But that is not, you don't, you don't grow and evolve and develop in this kind of quick hurry, give it to me, give it to me. Where you develop and you grow is in the steps that it takes to get to where you're going. And you don't want to rush the steps. You want to become who you're becoming. It's not supposed to be artificial. It's not like you're putting on another mask, another, you know, way to hide yourself to be uh, acceptable to the rest of the world. This is you becoming the best version of you. And if you think of like your best version, like if you just think of you and you think of your best, best version and your worst version, a lot of people are at their worst version and they think that's all they are. 
they just they're just like this is who I am. There's so many girls who are overweight and stuff, and they think, oh, this is just my body. No, this is your worst version of yourself, and you have gotten comfortable in your worst version. You have your best version. You got to think you deserve your best version. You got to get all eyes on you. You got to focus on you and you got to go towards your best version, whatever that is, wherever you've gotten yourself. It can be in your weight. It can be in your aging. It can be in your addiction. It can be wherever it is that you've let things get out of control. You have to go in and take the steps to put it back in order. And it's the steps that are the development. It becomes who you are. It's how you begin to see yourself. So you don't want to be skipping the steps. It's what gives you your identity. It's what gives you your clarity of self. So you want to move through it like with, with grace and ease. But and you're going to stumble. It's not like you have to be perfect. It's not like it's a runway. The grace and the ease is you know, a symphony with all of the, the dramatic parts and stuff is still, you know, it all is cohesive. It goes together. And that's what you are creating for yourself is this cohesiveness of your, your emotions and stuff where you're not just up and down and out of control where you, you know, things can go crazy and they can go up and down, but you can keep yourself right where you want to be. And it's not like wound up tight, like, oh, I'm going to lose it at any moment. If somebody even taps me on the shoulder, that's it. It's not like that. It is this coming to peace with yourself because then it's like, oh, yeah, that doesn't bother me. That doesn't bother me. But it's not like, I mean, I've still got things that bother me. Like, fuck, man. I, the places where I'll find myself impatient is like when I'm feeling overwhelmed. The dogs are going crazy. They're wanting something from me and I'm wanting to do something else. And they're demanding my time. And it's like, uh, you know, I'll get irritated. I'll be like, come on, stop. And so we all have like different things, you know. And some people are super fragile. Some people, you know, are way into their worst version of themselves. And they are so beat down, they can't imagine that they could ever be anything better. But it, that sad truth is that you have a good version of yourself. And once you start going towards the, the best parts of you and becoming whatever that is, then that is what you become. That is this timeline jumping thing and stuff. You're on the track of being the worst Jew, the victim, the poor, poor me, or you're on the track of like, well, let's work, but you know, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm doing my thing and becoming you. And, and, and I've seen a lot of people who are, you know, cause this dating thing just continues to blow up and the craziest stories, craziest stories. But so many people constantly, well, I've just given up. That's it. I'm done with the dating and I'm off all the, all of the websites and all this stuff. And, um, a couple of these different people I've gone into the comments and said, you need to go out and start doing things that you love to do. You've got to figure out what do you love to do, whatever it is. You know, maybe you like skydiving. Maybe you like, uh, what is that one? Because I keep seeing underwater. Because I've tried a lot of different things. Like I've done these things. Um Scuba diving. So maybe you want to, you know, get real into scuba diving. Maybe you want to, you know, start doing art. Maybe you want to start um, learning how to cook. Maybe you want to become more gourmet in your cooking skills. Maybe you want to, you know, everybody has stuff inside of them. Or like maybe they just love reading and they really like to talk about books with people. Just get into a book club or whatever. And there's always these things called meetups that you can look up and people put together these meetups. So I've seen them before, like people who love going and looking and watching old movies. And then a movie will come out and they'll all go. You have to be in certain cities and states for this. But then they go for this meetup and they go see the movie together. And then they all go to a coffee shop and talk about the movie and stuff. So it's doing things that you love to do. So you're really interested and it's so exciting because now you found other people who are interested in the same thing. And so go and start trying to find the things you're interested in. Because once you start going into who you are, finding what you're interested in, and don't get all caught up. Don't think, well, I'm going to go do a cooking class. And then I'm going to find somebody else and they're going to love to cook. And so we're going to go in and we're going to fall in love and we're going to both love to cook and that's it. 
And so then you go and you get disappointed and this sucks. I'm not meeting anybody. Then you're going for the wrong reasons. And when you go into a thing and you don't just meet somebody right there, this is not your stop. This is just a part of your journey. So don't get all caught up in thinking like, well, I didn't meet them. That's it. No, <laughs> maybe you have a couple more different classes you're going to go to. Maybe you are developing into this really cool person that's going to bring in another really cool person. And so don't get all caught up in thinking like maybe you, you know, maybe you're going to learn how to sew, how to cook, how to garden, how to like, there's so many different things that people are interested in, but there's other people like you who are interested in the same things as you. So when you go and you start doing these things, then the people who have the same interests end up, you know, being in the same orbit. It's like you have taken off and you've gone into this orbit now where there's people who have the same interest as you. And so now you've got this spinning around you. And so you don't want to just take the first one that comes and drops in, you know, and don't forget too, that there will be tests all along your path, you know, because you have to clean up your toxic behaviors. And so, you know, you may meet somebody at that first class, you may go and you may like them and stuff, and then you may date them and then it may go sour. That is because you had to, you're being tested on your stuff. You can't just go and meet your best. You're not your best version when you still have a lot of toxic things and you're not going to meet your best version when you still have toxic things that you continue to do. So you've got to, you know, make changes in your behaviors, things that, you know, you're comfortable doing, question yourself and start noticing because that's how you break your autopilot behaviors, your lower chakra stuff is what you got to clean up. And so the, um, and I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, you know, I know that they can interfere with frequency and stuff. So it could be like in Montecito somehow that they've done something with the frequency that has people. So whatever, and I'm sure people are on edge and stuff. And you know, something that's just really wild is, uh, man, it's so disturbing to me. Is the day before yesterday, I saw um, some old lady. I don't, I don't know. She's just ninety four years old or some shit, and uh, very loved in her neighborhood and shit. And these two fifteen year old girls, I think it was fourteen, fifteen year old girls, went in and brutally murdered her. And um, you know that. So that was just like all. You know why why would this happen why would these girls do this and the news and stuff like that and they're looking for them or something i don't even know if those ones are found but now there's another one this guy was like 80 he was 80 years old an old man he was a dog walker this one's in england i think and he was a dog walker it was at the park or something it was almost home just a couple steps from home and the kids, they're questioning on this. There's two 15-year-olds, a boy and a girl, and three 12-year-olds. How? Talk about heart chakras being off. How in the hell? How? Oh, man. I don't, I don't understand how people hear screams and begs. And, you know, there's not very many people who are getting, you know, taken out you know what however this hand to hand I don't know what these people are doing the one all I heard was it was a grizzly whatever they did to her I don't know if they used knives or whatever they did in this one you know over here probably bludgeoned or knife you know but how do you hear <laughs> how do you have that much anger that much disconnect like some of this stuff that we are uh, like having to witness and see is just like, fuck, man, so disturbing. Then you see all these people, you know, who are just leaving their kids and going and doing shit. And then you see all these kids growing up and being just, you know, monsters, monsters that just have no compassion, no empathy. It's like psychopaths. And, uh, you know, we got to see something, something's going wrong and how we're doing things. And I think there's enough studies to clearly show, you know, the, like I said, kids shouldn't be getting up and going to school like this. This is not right. And it is become where, you know, well, the school says you have to go. 
and now they've even got this one lady where they have, um, I, I, I don't know the whole story, something about her kid was being bullied. So she went up to the kid who was bullying her on school grounds and said, leave my fucking kid alone or you're going to answer to me. I don't know what all she said. I don't know if she threatened, but you know, they've had that shit in the movies. And then of course, so it's going to play out because it's in people's minds. It's programmed in. So she goes, and there's so much about that the schools are doing nothing to help their kids. And so she goes up and tells this kid, leave my kid alone. And so then she gets served by the cops and stuff. that She's not allowed on school grounds. Her kids are supposed, she's supposed to just drop her kids off. Like they're government owned. This is where the the government just waves their dick in our face. And people just, okay, I, my kids would be out of that fucking school so fucking fast. You know, and I don't know back when I was a mom and stuff. Like, I was a lot more uh, compliant to the system back then. You know, I tried to be a good citizen. I tried to be lawful and all that shit. But I did notice the bullshit all the time. And I was fucking, I was so fed up with the government back then. Like, I'm not shitting you. Like, I was very outspoken about Bush and, you know, somebody's got to do something. <laughs> and there would be white vans parked out in front of my house. And um, across the street, it wasn't like right in front of my house. It was like my street went like this. And then there was like this cul-de-sac. And then the other street went up this way. And so it would be parked over here. Where it was like, why is that van parked there? And, uh, um, but I'm sure they were listening because all that stuff has come out. They were going on and listening to us. And if we said that stuff, that we were being watched. Our names were going on list. And there was a lot of outrage. I wasn't the only person. You know, there was a lot of people who were really mad. I mean, there was already stuff coming out then. I think about that his dad was the one who did it and the other guy. And so there was just been so much, you know, so much bullshit. It's so funny, too, how my, my mom can stand the Clintons and I can stand the Bushes. <laughs> and it was like, they're all evil, see? And we're going to sit and argue back and forth. And um, there was something else that was just popping into my head. <sighs> oh, because this video, I have to have the same conversation with my mom. Remember when I was talking about when we were driving and there was all these little doves crossing the road. And so I slowed down in this car that was coming because she's like off a of state highway too. And the um, car that was coming towards us it was like sped up. Like it wanted to hit the doves crossing the road. And that is, um, and you know, she had been talking so much about the rapture and shit. And I said, that's the people who I think are getting raptured out. And so it started the whole thing, you know, when uh, the unjudgmental and hateful because I should forgive everybody for the things they've done because I'm a sinner and that everybody has done bad things. And so you know, you're allowed to do bad things because everybody uh, does bad things. And so it's the good people who are going to, you know, the ones that ask Jesus for forgiveness are the ones that are going to go up there. And um, so this video that I just saw was some woman and she was talking to this lady. You couldn't see either of their faces. You can see one lady's like leaning into a car in talking to this other lady and she is trying to ask her why are you going to that church he's already got charges it's already come out he's done this to a 12 year old girl and she starts doing the same thing well we've all committed sins and then we i'm it's about forgiveness and i um just starts going off on this whole thing like well i've done bad things so i have to forgive i'm not going to judge him for what he's done and just the the conversation is just so like these are the conversations where people are on like a script on an, a narrative where they're not thinking it through and then it's all based on this to me it's based on this fear of like well I don't want to go to hell and but you know the whole thing about you know sin and stuff what we have done the things that we do which sin is a very loose fitting word is um, because, like I've said, the, the um, heavens don't look at us as sinners. 
They look at it. It's all about energy, you know, where you're vibrating at. And this place is uh, not real. This is a, a live action game. And so uh, what you do here stays here, <laughs> you know, kind of like Vegas. And so it's not like, you know, you come here and you do this stuff. And then the heavens look at you and say, oh, you're a sinner. You're not allowed to come here. No, because they see how the bad things create good things. So it's not looked at the same way. And so the people who, you know, get all caught up in this sinning and stuff, but the important part is, is that people aren't going and healing their stuff. They're just like, you know, and, and then why would you, if a, if a preacher, which there's going to be tons of these, there already has been so many that keep coming out. They're involved in all these crimes with traffic. It's all because uh, the church was heavily involved. And at some point, if you were involved in the church, you have any of these places where people are, they at some point, there's a line they have to cross and they have to make a decision, you know, what they'll do and uh, um, what they'll do for money in most cases. You want to keep your job. You want to keep getting paid. And there's preachers who have said, well, oh, this place is disturbing and left and went, but also the people who are in charge also know when to approach and stuff. So it's, um, they have ways of, you know, sinking people into their corruption. So there's lots and lots of people who are going to be coming out in the churches and stuff that have done crimes and stuff. But the thing is, is that, um, you know, we don't just look at our, each other as just like, you know, criminals, but you also, you have to put things in balance. You have to put things back. You can't just go around hurting people and doing things to people. Then that's um, that's putting things out of balance. Uh, and you can't. It's like it's like if you just lived your life after life after life and constantly never cleaning up your messes, always putting things out of balance. It seems like you would just lower your vibration. You would just end up being just like this ignorance, you know, it, it, and where does the ignorance belong in the dark? So it's like you devolve into just being dark energy because you don't take any steps to make change, to do things different. And so if you want to evolve and go forward, you, know, you have to question yourself. You have to look at yourself. You have to understand yourself. And then you have to understand, you know, souls and stuff. So you don't want to get caught up in judgment and being hateful. And because um, every soul has their own, their own stuff going on, like their own, um, their own lives, their own soul journeys, like what I have been talking about. Like they have their own stuff that they have to, um, learn and grow or whatever and i don't know is like is some souls like there's something about that i've heard where you know some energy go go back and it's all toxic like maybe this happens in the realm of healing where you have to go and you have to release this past existence and maybe it's there where people if they get too stuck then it's where their energy goes into like with other energies to try and change it or something. Like, I don't know. This is so curious because we have had so many souls that have been here for a long time and haven't died. They haven't gone through like their life review. They just switch their consciousness into another being, which I don't understand that, you know, what is their fear from death? That that's not very spiritual. If you're so fearful of death, why would you be fearful of going home? Why would you be fearful of meeting your creator or your, you know, meeting the maker? Uh, you know, and the, the crazy thing is, is because it's meeting yourself and you have to go in and you have to face yourself and the things that you have done and so, I don't know. To me, it just holds them back. It holds them in a stagnation of progression. So, there's something that is... Um, I, I'm curious of how you know, some of this is going to go. Like, there's some curiosities, you know. 
like these kids who are committing these heinous crimes because like, I think prisons and stuff are going to be changing because prisons has been such a, 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 a negative institution. Like, I don't know if people are just, there's going to be like a lot of people are just like, you know, well, your life would be nothing. So it's the made for you. <laughs> and the ones that have been the most vicious criminals, if it's like, got the squad waiting for you out back. So I don't know. You know, if there is going to be some, maybe there's going to be some kind of transitional healing centers. I don't know, because it's very dystopian, you know, anything I look at, like with that, then it's like, oh, I don't know. Like, because is that very free will? If you are, you know, well, you're going to have to get your shit together. You're going to have to go in the maid. And because that, that is, a, then what are you doing it for? Because everything has to come from the heart and soul. You have to be doing it because you want to be doing it. Not because someone's forcing you to do it. So, I don't know. It is curious because we've got so much, so much evil. And there's such a separation occurring. And in the new world, the 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 evil can't exist. It's in a, it's in a different vibration. So it's like this vibration is going like super, super fast and everything that it doesn't meet its vibration is falling away. I don't know if it's committing crimes, it's taking it at like, I don't, I don't know, because we're still in the middle of it, you know. One thing that's kind of interesting though, is like I've seen a couple of these videos and I don't know if this is true because there's these accounts that are parody accounts and then they'll say stuff and then people start passing it around like it's inform like it's real and then it's like, but this isn't, this is parody. And uh, so I don't know, because there's a thing going around saying that Trump is saying on the 6th, which is like, I mean, that's two days away, is um, we're all going to have everything. You know, we're, go we're not going to need jobs. We're all going to have homes. We're all going to have the food, everything that we need. So I don't know. I know that's what we're headed to, but I don't know what they can do with just like overnight. We all just, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't know how it's all going to go down because there's still, there's just a lot. <clears throat> there's a lot going on. Um, and we still are in our Petri dishes. You know, there still is this, you know, sickness is going around. And this, oh, this doctor that I just saw uh, that was talking that I was going to say. So she was saying all of so she, all the Dovic cases. So, and this is going around still. My sister got it. Like people are still getting this. And um, so my uh, this doctor said that in the studies afterwards that they kept finding this certain bacteria that all the people who were dying from it all either had it or were lacking it. I can share the video if somebody wants to see it. It's this certain bacterial. A bio bacterial thing, a certain bug. And so this, um, this bug, uh, you need to be in there because in your gut, you have, you have good bugs that are there. That's your bio, your, um, biome, your gut biome is like your, your imbalance ecosystem for your gut so it's all working right then you are absorbing what's going out you know so you get all of the nutrition as it's leaving and it goes through your gut to process and so that's why you have such a long thing of intestines because as it travels through that's the absorption and so that is why they are attacking our gut why i've, I've said that there's such an attack on the gut because that is where you get your nutrition and so this um but you need the good bacteria in there because then the foods that we eat especially when it's full of parasites and stuff then there's like a war zone going on in there so you've got to have the good ones to kill the bad ones otherwise you get overrun by the bad ones and that's where we have most people are overrun by the bad ones and that's why they have like celiac they have like um celiac is its own thing but lots and lots of people are getting diagnosed with it i think because their gut health and that so you have um all these people who are uh what is that called um it's uh 
all these people have it. My son-in-law has it where they can't eat flour or grains or any of that stuff. I can't eat grains and stuff. I can't eat a bunch of fiber and stuff. Like I, I, I mean, you got to figure out your own system, what's healthy for you. And uh, so, um, I can't think of what it's called. I've known so many people and there are, there's so many people who have this thing, um, where they can't eat all this stuff and because their stomachs go so crazy because they're overrun with the bad bacteria. The bad bacteria also is what creates all the bloating. It's what creates all of the IBS symptoms because you've got a war zone going in there and you're, they're flooding you with the bad bacteria. So it kills off the good bacteria so that you have a war zone. So you're not getting your nutrition and your, your systems all jacked up. So the, um, and that's why I say like drink kombucha, but then I've heard other people say like, don't just go in and start drinking kombucha. Cause that will just, if your system is way out you're it will send you into a whole different thing. So you got to work on building your probiotics and stuff. So you got to figure it out. Like you've got to try different things. Like if you take probiotic pills, it's not going to give you near as much, I think, as you want. And then it's also super important. Your gut health is if you're copper deficient, your gut is not going to be as absorbent. And that also has to do with the iron and magnesium. I just saw a guy talking about the amount of magnesium that we all need is huge, huge amount. And it is, um, he said how much you need just to break down one molecule of sugar. And he was going through this whole thing about, you know, staying away from sugar and stuff because that will create more magnesium depletion. And he, I can show that video too, because he goes and explains a bunch of stuff that I'm not explaining. And it, it was, um, a good one, which to me, I just is like, fuck, you need to take a lot of magnesium. And I need a like, I could go through a couple bottles a month, taking four or six pills a day of it. And then I've got to do the spray again. I think I'm going to get the flakes and make my own, but I have liked this spray. And I also, when you spray this on your feet, and this also could be why I'm just like knocked out. But I just spray this a lot, and sometimes I can't sleep very good. I think that has to do with the moon cycles or something. But this stuff is um was off of um uh, Amazon. It was like I don't know, twelve or fifteen bucks or something. I can look or share the link if somebody wants it. But magnesium absorbs well through your feet, so it's this oil, and you spray it on your feet. But also, I'm taking the lysinate, lysinate magnesium too, and um. And my, I, it's, it's, it's almost like, this is almost completely gone. And somebody, even though I've been doing this every week, the other day, somebody said, oh, it's quite obvious you colored your hair. I was like, I haven't colored my hair since 2015. So no. And I've been doing this every week to show. So nobody could accuse me of coloring my hair. So I have been showing the slow transformation but there's other transformations that happen too because we're all mineral deficient and it has way more uh, problems like with our gut and stuff. Like it causes all these other issues and then that's how they can get us so sick and keep us sick. So working on your gut health is super, super important. And that is also so many of the, you know, the little blue pill that's here to help is really uh, as an attack on that certain area. And so a lot of medications, you know, uh, the, the side effects can be bloody diarrhea and all this stuff because they're attacking your gut all the fucking time. And so it's important to work on your gut health and building that up. And so, you know, your, your pooping whole thing matters. Like pay attention to how, you know, what you take in and how it comes out. And, um, and you know, it really does matter about watch what you eat and taking care of yourself. So it's, um, it's all goes together. And then, you know, there's more and more of these doctors coming out and saying like the more and more doctors are catching on and noticing. And that one doctor who was on T uh, Tucker's show, she said that they purposely, like they don't teach us any of the stuff they try and get it to 
get us to focus on one system, not put it all together. And how important it is that it's all together because it's all one system. And that's what I've been saying for so long. It's a closed system and it's like a domino thing. Like each one has the next one that hits into it. But everything they do is disruptors. So they create disruption in your system. And we allow this because we think somehow it's going to fix us instead of us noticing like, okay, you've got you know, high blood pressure, you've got, you know, gut issues, you've got, uh, whatever the different things, um, heart issues, diabetes, all these different things is like I've said, it's like your body is representing something that you need to heal. You need to work on. So you need to focus on that. And I can't say, you know, like, and don't go to the doctor, you know, cause everybody's on their own journey. Some people's journey is about going to the doctor. And so everybody's got to, you know, listen to themselves, not get caught up in listening to what somebody else tells you. You have to do what feels right for you. And if you're doing something that, you know, you're not going to be doing in 10 years, that is the process that leads you into the not doing it. Not because somebody told you not to do it. It's your life journey to figure your shit out. So it's, um, you know, it's your you're you're doing the right thing you're going to the right you're you're always in the right place at the right time um and there's always lessons because even there's lessons about you know when you're not paying attention and you're not noticing the signs those are big lessons is that uh, so many people's like oh my god I, I just wasn't listening i wasn't listening to the signs i wasn't paying attention and that will drive you crazy when things go wrong but that's a part of your journey and, you know, I mean, I was going to the medical, going to the medical, no matter how many fucking times it was fucking fucking me up. I was going for the next thing and next thing. I mean, I still, they fucked my gut. They fucked my head, brain. They fucked my, um, uh, uh, just so many things like, and then I go in to have them fix my eyes. It's like, oh my Jesus Christ, Kelly. So, um, but everybody has their own, you know, their own lesson plan, the own things that you are here to do. You don't have to follow mine because you're on your own. And if you feel like, well, I've really got to go to the doctor about this then go to the doctor about that. And, uh, but the thing is, is to get focused on what it is that the problem is. And so, you know, like diabetes or whatever, you don't just go and say, okay, just, you know, give me the shot. There's a lot of people who don't even have to go and take all of the medicines and stuff like that because they start doing it through diet. And my sister-in-law did that. She went to the doctor and they said, you're becoming diabetic. So she went and changed her whole eating and stuff. And then you don't have to go and take any of this stuff. So that is where you could go and make big changes, focusing on your health you know, it's all things that you should have been doing because it wouldn't have gone out of balance. It wouldn't have got messed up. And so you're doing the right thing. You're on this track to becoming your best self. And before is when you're not listening to yourself and you're doing things, you know, for other reasons, but it's important to really focus on your gut health. And it's important to, um, listen to what your body is telling you in any of the kinds of things because it's always giving you warning signs it's telling you things you know just like before your car breaks down you know your it was, a, it was a rattling it was doing this you know like you always look back and you think oh well it was running really rough or whatever and so you you it's, it's like you get a different perspective once you move past things and that's the thing is like what we're in right now it's like we're in the thing once we move through this, and the more that we begin to look backwards, the more we're going to understand things a lot more clearly. And um, and we'll be able to see, you know, it's, it's going to give us a whole different view of everything that is going on. And it's also kind of like our minds are changing and expanding so that we can accept more information of our failures of how we have failed as a society by latching on to you know what they tell us that we need to do and you know and they, but if they've got all these people you know disconnected because i have said like i know people are disconnected from you know like what she said your heart chakra or whatever because your heart is where your soul is it's like this rest it's like the the like the nucleus kind of of you 
like the the center your heart center so if you think of your energetic self going into your heart center and that is the rest of it is like the light that emits and so it's like your your energy the core is like in that area and so it's where you feel so much in your heart but then it has all these other things to go through in your perceiving. And that's why the more you work on your lower chakra stuff, the things that you hold on to, the things that you don't want anybody to see, the things that you push down and try and forget, those things are the things that you need to release and let come up. Free them because it's too much to hold them on, hold, hold them down. And then you got to question yourself, why am I trying to hold them down? Why am I trying to hide? Like I just saw this girl and she was very emotional. And so she was speaking out for the first time publicly of, uh, you know, that she was trafficked and stuff. And that would be very hard, you know, and it'd be very hard even facing it because it'd be a lot of steps to go through. Because you would be at some point, you know, you would just think really bad about yourself. You would just think I'm a whore, I'm this, I'm that. And then you would also have these people who, you know, your life's at risk if you don't do what you're told. And then you're under their control. Then how did you get under their control? You have all those things to go through and learn and stuff. And then to go through the process of shame and guilt. And then to get to the point of speaking out and saying, you know, this is my truth. This is what I did. This is what happened to me. That's powerful, man. That's super powerful and it's very healing and uh, you know and it's a lot to face these sides of yourself these dark sides of yourself and I don't know where she's at in the thing I didn't listen to all her story I just heard what she was gonna be talking about I see these people doing this stuff all the time people speaking out about things that have happened to them there's all sorts of people speaking out about family traumas and things that happened when they were kids and stuff and that you know that's why is because it's this part of healing and speaking your truth and saying, you know, this is this is what I went through. This is how I became me. This is who I am. This is a part of me. This is, you know, when, it, when you keep it in the shadows, it's the shadow self. But in order to love your whole self, you have to love your shadow self. Oh, it's going to make me emotional. <laughs> because that's the side of you that you know, get you to become who you are. And so it is an important side of you. The dark and the light inside of you matters. And there's a lot of people, you know, just feeding the dark and feeding the dark and not having any idea. And they're going to be in a lot of pain when the light comes in and shows them what they've been doing. But, it, you know, you have to get into this balance. And there's just so much of people who are so out of balance, you know, there's people who really think that they are their worst selves, that they are this pain and this suffering. And you can change all of that. You just have to face it. You have to, it's like the transmute, transmuting the energy, but it is like the, the development of you by merging these two sides of you, bringing them together in the center the heart center, bringing both sides of you together. And don't get, like when you feel this one side trying to pull you, don't feel like, well, you're broken. You're noticing. You're noticing how to keep yourself more in balance, how to keep yourself more at peace and not being driven by your impulses and um, fetishes and stuff, you know, to be able to really... Uh, work on the compassion and empathy of how you affect others and you know the the shadow of you is you know has you know where you've hurt other people you've done things that has caused pain for other people and but the the things that got you to do the things that you did were because you were in pain and so it's just like this long ending thing where we all have to just look and be like, okay, well, yeah, we've all been in pain. We've all been going through these things, but it's the, the problem is the people who don't want to change. They just want everybody to just accept them for being their worst self. And that is where things are going to be pulling free. There's not going to be, you know, when, when people are working on becoming their best selves, it's not going to be just like, yeah, we're, we're just going to go hang out with the person who is just an asshole all the time and doesn't, it doesn't even try. Like it, that is where this social standard will begin to emit, where people will begin to 
you know, be isolated in their own misery. And so it's important to keep facing yourself. And when you don't want to face yourself, then, you know, it's like your ego is blocking you. The dark energy is trying to keep you under their thumb or something. You've got to push harder. You know, everybody has it. You know, find something, you know, that happened to you when you were a kid. And really think about the emotions that you felt, the anger, the the uh, distrust, the uh, the self. Um, it's like this the self hate that is created. This part where I don't know where things are out of control when you're a kid, and then when things keep happening, and then you become like hate yourself. Like like uh, it's weird. Because it's like it's out of your control. You can't do it. But then it's like it, people start feeling like that that is who they are. Like they're represented by their pain. The things that happen to them happen to them because of the things that happen to you happen to you because it's part of your soul's journey. It's a part of your lesson plan. It's part of what you came here to experience. So, yeah. Okay. Gosh, dang was five five three three um <clears throat> okay let me think if there was something else so yeah i hope friday is you know our day of change oh, please <gasps> please like it's got to be coming so you know it's got to be coming in quick and it's wild because you just keep seeing all these people that just keep going you know it's like living like you have to live in like this this bliss is ignorance kind of way like i'm just gonna turn off everything that's happening outside in the world and just ignore it and just go have fun i'm just gonna go have some fun and to me it's kind of like those people that feel so motivated by like like that i just keep feeling like is this their last days like they're just so motivated to just i'm just gonna have fun i'm just gonna have fun because their soul is telling them just go have some fun because you're out of here and so I don't know, this is like the thing where it's like, it's very curious, like when we start looking backwards and that's not going to be something that we all know, like some of us will know certain people and they'll be like, you know, they just wanted to have fun and then they were gone all of a sudden and be like, oh, see, your soul really does tell you what to do. Like, go have some fun, <laughs> you know, and if that's what your soul's telling you, go have some fun, go have some fun. Don't just listen to me. You know, I'm just the person who's running around saying, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. And the sky's been falling for, you know, a long time. The thing is, is that we just got to get more people to understand, you know, that they need to start looking up and stop just, you know, trying to get to the next place, trying to please the next person, trying to buy the next thing. It's like, you know, everybody's just got to stop and, I don't know, get more in with what life is all about. Like, it's super sad, too, in California. Like, those campers that went and fucked with that bear when that bear was, like, a part of that place. Like, so many people had been interacted with that bear and it was just, like, a fun, jolly bear that everybody loved. And the bear loved everybody. And then these people fucked with it and it hit back. And it, so it ended up getting euthanized because of people... It's behavior like this is the thing is like we've got to learn to have respect we respect for each other respect for other beings just respect man like it's living it's it's living it's alive it has that right to experience and so i don't know there's just a lot of things that have to change but so much that has to change is our attitude the way we look at things the way we act I mean, that is why we have this whole thing going on in our development of us needing to, you know, develop ourselves. To take this person that you hate and turn it into the person that you love. Like, that's what you're here to do. <laughs> so get to it. You know, that's what it's all about is learning how to love yourself, love everyone, and how to have a loving day. Because it is all up to you. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.